So tip number one, I think, is you know, have the right perspective. Have the right perspective. The Bible says here in Ephesians 4, verse 23, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. It says something similar here in Romans 12. Romans 12 says here, I beseech you therefore, brethren. So beseech you, he's like basically begging. Um, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service and you know that's one thing that always points that always strikes me in that verse is it is our reasonable service isn't it it's not it's not unreasonable of god to expect us to serve him with with our life i mean think about what he does for us the fact that we're even alive the fact that we even breathe he's given us salvation he's given us a home in heaven um, he gives us so many things and i'll talk about you know something else later on when we when we talk about love but it truly is our reasonable service. It's reasonable of God to expect you to gather in a church, to learn about him, to, to learn about his word. It's reasonable of God to expect you to tell others about him and go soul winning and, and invest you know, your life serving him. You know, we think you know, if God just wants a little bit of our time. We're like, oh, you know, God's trying to take so much from us. You know, it's reasonable for God to expect all of it, um, not just some of it. Um, number, verse number two, and be not conformed to this work, to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, you know, we need to have the right perspective. If we're going to have a successful marriage and we want to have the right sort of marriage that's going to glorify God, we have to have the right perspective of marriage. You know, we have to have the right perspective. And, you know, that's why the Bible talks about renewing your mind. Because when we get saved, you know, sometimes we come with a lot of baggage. We come, along, come on with a lot of wrong ideas, things that we've been taught. So renewing, the renewing of your mind is getting the right perspective, right? Rethinking things, reconsidering things that you've been taught, uh, reconsidering things that you've uh, been brought up with. You know, even reconsidering your own experiences. You say you've experienced something and, you know, maybe this worked or maybe this didn't work. But it's renewing all of that, re rethinking it and getting back to the Bible. Uh, even reconsidering your own ideas. Because sometimes when you don't have an authority from above, you're just trying to live life as, as you think and things that you've figured out. But something that you've figured out and you think is working might actually be wrong might actually not be the right way to do things. So we have to renew our mind and get the right uh, perspective. So we've got to be like the Bereans, right? We've got to get back to a biblical view and everything. You know, the Bereans in Acts 17 says they were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they received the word with all readiness of mind, but searched the scriptures daily, you know, whether those things were so. So we need to be the same. You know, now we have the new man. We need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind and get back to the Bible, make sure that what we do and how we see things is the way that God actually wants us to see things. And, you know, when it comes especially to the topic of marriage, you know, we need to have the right perspective of love. Because there are a lot of ideas out there about what love is um, that are not right. And, you know, in, in the context of marriage, because we can talk about love in a lot of different aspects, but in the context of marriage, you know, you don't want to get sucked into this um, sort of Hollywood fairy tale expectations of marriage, you know, because, you know, sometimes people watch too many movies or they watch too many dramas and things like that. And they get this Hollywood idea, fairy tale idea of marriage as though, um, you know, you know, what am I talking about? It's, it's when people think, oh, you know, you know, my husband should be, you know, I should be the apple of his eye. I should be the only one that he's thinking about. I should be the most beautiful uh, person in his eyes and, and vice versa. But I think, you know, in a marriage, you just need to be real with each other. You know, you know me and my wife, you know, we, we admit to each other, hey, you know, is, is my wife, I, I think my wife is beautiful, but is she the most beautiful girl in the world? Well, you know, to be honest with you, you know, she's not. And, you know, I'm just being honest. And, and I think anyone who's being honest, you know, we all know that there are a lot, you know, am I the most handsome person there is? No. So we, I think we just got to get real that if we have these Hollywood expectations of our spouse, um, you know, that, that um, it's not going to, if we have too high an expectation, um, it's just not real. And it's just not the sort of, um, you know, grounding you want um, for your marriage. So, you know, we love each other. And, and we care for each other, 
but you know we're real with each other too. Um, so don't get sucked into these Hollywood fairy tale expectations. If your if your husband or your wife is is not what you've seen in the movies, then uh, don't don't be disappointed. Um, so we want to have the right idea of love. And the first verse I want to show you here is in 1 John 4.10. It says here, Herein is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. You know, a lot of people accuse God um, foolishly and say, you know, why did God you know, create us just... To worship him and to love him and and did he do that yes he did he did create us to worship him and to love him but secondarily because i think primarily god created us so that he could love us you know the bible says here, here herein is love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin so we have to have the right perspective of love that love is something that gives love is you know uh, is a giving thing it's it's not self-serving you know, God created us also so that he could love us. He showed his love to us. You know, Romans 5, 8, God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And it's in response to that, that we ought to love him. You know, going back to that reasonable um, service. So love is something that we do. You know, it's, it's not just an emotion. It's not what uh, Hollywood tries to make it out to be, that it's just this, this emotional, hot, zealous, you know, sort of thing. Those things follow on from, from the actions. Uh, let's turn to Second John. Here we see another definition of love. It says, I rejoice greatly that I found of thy children walking in truth, as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And look at verse 6. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. So the Bible defines here love as walking after God's commandments, walking after his commandments, obeying God. So you can't love somebody if you're disobeying God, right? You can't say, I love you so much that I'm going to disobey God in any area. You, if, you're love, if you love somebody, you will always obey God. You will do the right thing. Um, now, I won't turn to 1 Corinthians 13, but I'll turn to... Um, actually, yeah, I will. 1 Corinthians And let's just read these couple of verses here. These are probably the most famous verses when it comes to love. It uses the word charity here because it's, I believe the Bible here is emphasizing the fact that love is an action. Um, it's not just an emotion. And when we read here in verse 4, it says, Charity suffereth long and is kind. So as we're reading through this, just think of it. These are things that, that love does, not what love feels. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. So it's not looking out. Love doesn't look out for its own interests. It looks out for the interests of others. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. When I see easily provoked, to me that speaks of pride. Right? You're not proud, so you're not easily upset or easily offended. Thinketh no evil. So it's always thinking the best and giving people the benefit of the doubt. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. There's the, the keeping of the commandments, right? You're not rejoicing in sin, but you're rejoicing in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. So love is uh, an action, isn't it? It's not, a, it's not a feeling. And we know that, you know, like we talked about God. God commendeth his love that he gave his only begotten son, like John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, right, that he gave his only begotten son. He proved it with actions. It wasn't just words and it wasn't just emotion. So have the right perspective. So we talked about the renewing of your mind. Hey, have the right perspective of love, that love is something that is sacrificial. Love is something that is giving. Love is something that is done to others. It's not something that is self-serving have the correct perspective of love. But number three, you know, realize the commitment that you've made. 
you know, you've made a commitment, you know, don't always think, you know, you don't want to be the, the frame of mind when you're married is trying to look for a way out all the time or trying to find reasons of why to leave your spouse. You need to realize the commitment that you've made. You've made a commitment for life till death. You've, uh, but not only that, you've made a promise to serve, haven't you, in your vows? You made a promise to serve your wife or to serve your husband. And you've also made a promise to be faithful. And, you know, when I think about marriage, you know, marriage is not always 50-50. You know, the world will tell you that, you know, marriage needs to be 50-50. And yeah, if marriage is 50-50, meaning both parties are doing their part, your marriage is going to be a lot better. So if you want a good marriage, you know, make it 50-50, put in your part. But marriage is not always 50-50. Sometimes marriage is 100-0. You know, where you are giving and giving and giving and not getting anything back. Does that mean that you stop giving? No. You ought to keep giving and keep doing the right thing, keep loving um, and you will have a good marriage and, and your, your, I believe you know, if, if that's the sort of marriage you have, your spouse will not stay at zero for very long because uh, like the Bible says, if you, do, if you reward uh, evil with good, you'll heap coals of fire on their head. You know, they'll, they'll feel guilty and they'll want to um, repay the, the love that you're showing them. So number one, you know, have the right perspective of, of marriage. You know, have the right perspective of love and, and realize the commitment that you've made. 